Greetings, this is Darth Vane and welcome back to Let's Play The Elder Scrolls Arena. Okay. In the last episode we were wandering around Elden Grove. It's quite pleasant-ish. It's not like it's been a fight a minute. Uh, the only real danger we've come across at the moment is Basically, there are ghosts hiding in the mists. The best way to describe them, I think they're ghosts. Basically, they're. We've encountered them before, they're like wraiths and stuff, but they're coloured white so they kind of blend into the fog and therefore a bit more of a surprise and easier to blunder into. I don't know if you know for anyone who's got had any experience with my let's plays you no I tend to just kind of let the let's I tend to kind of well I have various things sometimes you'll catch me rambling about various bits and sometimes I'll just play in almost silence to be honest What do you think we're going to get for this episode? <laughs> I, mean, I don't mind. Uh, I mean, I like exploring and sometimes just being able to show off these old games I mean sure can't always rep let's plays can't necessarily replace the enjoyment of actually playing these games you know but they're a good substitute second place type thing And at least one person has uh, said that my voice is pretty good. Is it AMSR fodder? I think was the term that was used. You know, which is cool. It was a nice comment. So that's us back where we were. Okay, so we've done the loop round now. That's good to know. Let's go fill in the blanks then. Oh, and I was like, hang on a minute, there aren't two exits out of this dungeon, is there? <laughs> So oh, yeah, I think in the last episode I was, well for me it was a couple of minutes ago, because I tend to record in blocks, and I was talking about basically what I was doing and things about the, the Labour Party and Unite the Union and Unite Community and stuff like that. I don't suppose anyone from any of those organisations are ever going to watch these, but I'm they might do, so I have to be careful that I just about what I say and stuff. Which I find annoying. You know. As long as I'm not 
as far as I'm concerned, as long as I'm not out and out lying, which I don't really see the point of, then, you know, my opinions are my opinions and they should be respected as such. You know, I should be free to be able to speak my mind without worrying that I'm distressing anything. You know, and it's like the biggest dance that I have is. I don't like Starmar, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to hide that fact. I don't like Starmar, largely because of how everything's been going with, with Jeremy Corbyn and I find him incredibly divisive. I think he's a liar and a hypocrite and uh, he's not fit to be leader to be honest. Of course. And I. Yeah, I should be, as a, as a Labour Party member, I should be able to say that. I should be able to discuss my differences. He should be able to know that so that he can kind of address why I think he's a hypocrite. Why I don't think he's fit in a leader, even if it means him to become a better leader. I mean, I don't like a lot of the things that he's, he's done with the Labour Party. I think a lot of it is he's he's done a lot of things to damage that he accused that he and others accused uh, the membership doing under of doing under um, Jeremy Corbyn. Likewise, I don't agree with um, what's been happening to the membership being eff effectively purged. You know, by a party that's supposed to be democratic for the and um, for the people. If they can't, people can't say what they think and feel, and you know, then what's the point? I think misogyny and racism and, se and you know that sort of discrimination yeah, and various hate yeah I think that I think that's wrong I think there, are, there are, people should be made to feel but at the same time we shouldn't be policing faults either I mean, Labour's supposed to be a democratic socialist party. So, and that basically means working with uh, people and respect differences of opinion. You ain't gonna cure things like racism by telling people just simply that they can't be racist. That's not gonna work. 
all you do is build up resentment and a secret rebellion and you end up with the alt-right as it currently is where a whole bunch of people they feel exiled and therefore they are more indignant about their right to be racist that's not and that's not how it works you know that's not going to work to f resolve situations what we've got to do is understand not only understand why people are racist why people want to be racist what their concerns are without dismissing them as just being thick or stupid you know and look at addressing those concerns so that once the underlying root causes of of uh, things like racism are done people will naturally choose not, will just naturally choose not to be racist you know and that's always going to be a dis uh, difficult task when we have a political system and a society that's entirely based around division and control because it works us and them <sighs> where are we going uh, well we went up around there uh, let's, okay let's go up there so yeah like I said I doubt anyone from the from the Labour Party is going to hear this you know and to be honest if anyone confronted me on it I would say yeah I said that although to be honest you'd have to kind of show me where I said it because I probably because you know although I probably said that was probably the better answer because uh, I mean I probably remember because I'm conversing about saying these things, but you might need to might need to remind me exactly when, so I can go. Yeah, that's me, and that's not because there's a lot of that's been put out about what I've said and not said, which is completely untrue. Where is he? Let's get out of here because I don't know where he is. I can't see him. In his fog, it's annoying. I can't see him. Go away, go away. Gonna die, gonna die. I can't see where it is. So, yeah. I mean, how can a Labour Party be expected to represent a country, represent people, represent communities if they're not if they're not engaging and not allowing those communities those communities to say what they think and feel and fear? I mean, how can you address fears that? you don't know that you don't know anything about and are refusing to engage with because ultimately a lot of discrimination is based on fear fear and jealousy mostly Yeah, we're back around it. Okay. And do you want, the thing is with emotions like fear and jealousy is you ain't going you aren't going to stop them just by telling people they can't have those emotions. That won't work. All that happens is they'll stop telling you and they'll just harbour those emotions in secret. And it will come out in their in their actions and festo and cause even more division.
See if I can rest here. Another one around somewhere. Mm -hmm. Really? Okay. Oh, there was another one around somewhere. Probably stuck in the other side of that. That's fine. But yeah. I, mean, I can go into long rants about why I don't like Keir Starmer and why I, I think he's not fit to lead the, lead, the lead the Labour Party. But the thing is, the Labour Party is about more than just the leadership. There's more at stake than whether someone likes Keir Starmer or Jeremy Corbyn. People argue that Jeremy Corbyn was a populist, but that's completely wrong. Jeremy Corbyn wasn't a populist. Jeremy Corbyn was just popular. His policies, a lot of his policies, which are old traditional Labour policies, I see, I see an increasing support. Because systems are breaking down. Things we've taken for granted just aren't working anymore. I mean, unfortunately, and this is happening all over the world, the capitalist system is failing. Well, I say failing. It's not the problem is it's, capitalism is it's not favouring, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. In effect, the capitalist system is succeeding. The problem is, is it's affecting ev everyone else to the point that yeah, now the capitalists, they do have all the money. Rich people do have all the money. There's t <laughs> Poor people are struggling and dying all around the world. And... And the thing is, that capitalism is always a zero-sum game. You know, that's not ide that's not I ideology. That's mathematics. You know, it is literally like it is literally playing a game of Monopoly. That's what it's all about. You're bankrupting the other players. Except the other players aren't just other landlords, it's everybody else on the planet.
and a problem with zero-sum games is that sooner or later you end up with someone who, with, with the winner, who the winner, quote unquote, who has everything, and everyone else who has nothing. That's the whole point of zero-sum games. But the problem with that is, how can a species survive? if there's only one person with everything you know <laughs> if one if only one person has everything and then everyone else is dead then a society or anything just isn't going to thrive And I find the biggest problem with Tories, and that's not people who vote Tory, that's that's people who choose to be Tory, is that a lot of them do act out of fear based on the principle that everyone else is always Tory. Basically, because Tories exist, Tories, Tories live in fear. And it's like, well, the answer to that is not to be Tory. You know? If you're not designing systems expecting everyone to screw you over, so therefore you've got to screw them over first, then, yeah. And you can say, oh well that's naive, but it's not naivety, it's fact. the only way for society to thrive and for us to move on is to get past the point where we need people to where people need to feel, feel the need that they need to screw people over before they get screwed over you know I mean, that kind of drive fulfills everything and pretty much explains everything that's going on today. Yeah, I mean, absolutely everything that's going on in the, in the news today, all around the world, doesn't matter who it is. And the only way to get around that is to look at the bigger picture and not deal with those fears. You know, you don't have to let people get, get away with it and take advantage of you. But you can choose not to let the idea that people might take advantage of you get in the way of doing, well, doing what's right. You know, to make sure that you get your share first and there's nothing left for anyone else. A lot of that's largely based on your outlook on life and the sort of experiences that you've had.
I mean, it's not for me or anyone else to turn around to say that people's experiences are right or wrong. You know, there are experiences that we that people might not want to, might not want to happen and are, and are, and are regrettable, but it doesn't deny that people have gone through them. And it doesn't and it doesn't dismiss the fact that people are, f are affected by them. It's just that it sh we should be helping individuals do their best to let any regrettable experiences let them move on from that to not let it define who they are to not live in fear And I guess, well, it's just sad when we see what's going on. A lot of the Labour Party is based on fear. Fear of popularity over, Je over Jeremy Corbyn. Fear of being branded anti-Semitic. You know. Especially when that fear is so easily exploited. But then that's the foibles of human emotion, I guess. It's very, very easy to exploit various people and their emotions. As people are trained in it. So, I mean, as such, how we, I mean, when it's a principal skill for people involved in the espionage, now, I don't just mean that because of the movies. It's like literally, it's literally true. It's a very, very it's a, a very useful trade craft tool, according to, uh, according to various people and various sources, and you can see why. The problem is, is it's one of those topics that I can ramble on for hours about. I could write 300,000 word papers, you know. And you still wouldn't scratch the surface because there's entire experts and bodies of knowledge involved. And by the time we get round to identifying and sorting all that out, it's all changed again because something new has come up. Even though it's not that new because it's exactly the same as all the other things, just different. Which I know may make no sense, but it's like, okay, let's wait. But the underlying mechanics of most of the issues that we face today, for example, as I was saying, fear, 
doesn't matter if it's it doesn't matter if it's climate change it doesn't matter if it's immigration it doesn't matter if it's job security it doesn't matter if it's poverty housing you name it. it it's all based on fear I get the feeling this may take me a while. But it turns out that I'm having so much fun talking and rambling and doing whatnot that I'm getting lost. I don't know, I'll get lost anyway, but... <laughs> One of the amusing things is it's like... When I find that I end up with... I noticed this when I was uploading Baldur's Gate, for example. If you're spending too much time loading and saving, or spend much time looking at the map, I tend to use the automatic screenshots because I don't have a lot of good branding for my channel. It's not, I know the idea of it, but that's not something that I'm good at. You know, and. I mean, I'm not going to be. I'm not a brilliant let's player that's going to be competing with the, the like of the likes of well Kikoskia, Avak, Mithril Zenith and the billions of others not literally billion well not quite literally billions but there are a lot of very good YouTube YouTubers who play different games some are specialists in games some are specialists in type of games some people just play whatever's hot looking for clicks you know all i know is that i have a massive list of let's plays that even i that i can't keep up with them all but i have a massive list of let's players that i watch who are a great inspiration and the amount of effort they put into their there is phenomenal and there is no way that I am able that I am even able to do that because it's just too damn tiring even when I'm not doing anything you know I mean, for me, this will always be a hobby because, well, I say a hobby because it's like, okay, it's something to do with my downtime while I'm waiting because everything else I tend to do tends to be very sporadic. It's either a lot going on at once or there's huge gaps or it's like maybe one, two days a week. I might do something for a couple of hours and then the rest of my time. So let's play and here's something that I control that I can set my hours to. And decide to do as much as I want. And I found it actually helps because I've completed more games doing let's plays than I do without them. And it's almost impossible for me to play and complete games without without me doing let's plays of them, to be honest. Again, that but a big part of that turns out to be my autism. The repetitive behaviours which often sees me restart and restart and restart. So by recording and not doing like any sort of editing, I'm kind of forcing myself, okay, that this is the this is the run and I'm not restarting and people want to see me get to the end of it and stuff which is cool where are we going now uh, but yeah so I'm that's kind of the main reason I don't really have a farm now to get back to that tangent because that's the other thing I do a lot tangents come up I end up waffling and I kind of stray away from the point that I was trying to make that's why I find it usually better to communicate by writing because at least I can remember what's being said and then get back to 
what my original point is without forgetting what it was or what I've said about it because the other thing I do is end up repeating myself a lot because I can't remember can, sometimes I can't remember what I've said and what I haven't and who I've said it to and you know what I'm supposed to, what I'm supposed to be talking out about without distractions that sort of thing Notes are all well and fine, but it's the the best way to describe it. The, exec, the executive functioning at the time, um, basically, to put it in terms of progr in programming, you know, I can. I'm okay at compile. I'm okay at compiling and getting stuff ready and doing all that. That I can do. But the actual runtime of the conversation as I'm processing is where I struggle because there's just too much going on in my mind. In fact, I find this kind of useful because this kind of uh, mindless stream of consciousness kind of thing means that I'm actually, I have basically wired my brain straight to my mouth. So if I think it, I say it. No. Not necessarily the best thing for anyone who wants to be in politics, I guess. But it means that it's taken. But for me, it's actually taking a lot off my off the cognitive load because I'm not having to think about what I'm saying. I often don't think about how I say it. And of course, then I don't have the anxiety of, have I not said this, or have I not said that, or have I said that and it's not appropriate, or it's irrelevant to the conversation. Am I boring people with my waffling, you know? How is my body language? Does it look like I'm going to beat people up just because, just because uh, I'm, slightly, I'm slightly in pain standing up and speaking, you know? Anything like that, really. It just a million faults a second so many that the irony is you try and stop and focus on one and it's like what are you thinking the first thing that happens is your mind goes blank because it's the part of the brain that deals with multitasking and yeah the part of the brain that deals with multitasking so it's like the bit that stores you talk about a memory, it's the bit that stores the memory so you can process the words you needed to describe it, that sort of thing. You know? If you're doing mental arithmetic, it's where you're storing the total for the value that you've got in your head. That sort of thing. And, I mean, I find note-taking an absolute nightmare because it's probably one of the worst multitasking to uh, tasks I have to face that I str struggle with because if you're trying to because you're trying to mix between listening to what's being said as people said it as people are saying it plus writing down in something that's legible so it can be readable whether by you or by someone else And I find that an absolute nightmare. Which means my policy meetings are going to be fun. But, yeah. So, anyway, enough stream of consciousness and stuff. We'll try and just see the time. It's easy to lose track of time. Try and find somewhere. Probably here we do. Let's have a look. Probably kill you. Let's kill you first. The fun part is these are all going to come back once I've once I've done the second level. So, yeah. Anyway, yeah. So we're going to save it there. 
This has been Darvain doing the Elder Scrolls Arena and rambling about various things that are not necessarily relevant to even the Elder Scrolls Arena. So if you like what you're seeing here, be sure to like, subscribe, share and comment. Um, if you feel like it, please consider sponsoring me on Patreon. It's only it's only a pound a month because I don't actually do any additional Patreon. Everything I do goes on YouTube and not being a part of it, I don't get anything from it. Even though it would come, even though it would come in handy uh, since I don't work. Um, because, and uh, yeah, so. Um, yeah, it's pretty much okay. So this has been Darvain. As I said, if you like what you're seeing here, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment. Please consider sponsoring me on Patreon. And until next time, goodbye.